Teamwork makes the dream work at stop number four on News 25's 25 Teams in 25 Days, where the George County Rebels are putting in work at their home away from home. Annual team camp at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College setting the tone for we over me. 25 Teams in 25 Days. Brought to you by champion Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Three, one, two, three. Rebels! It's high in here. Going at each other 24-7, you're going to have a little fuel under fire. We just seem to work together, more of a family, not just a team, but a family. You know, it's just kind of kick-starts the season for us, uh, ends the summer. You know, summer is such a grueling, grinding-type situation that, you know, about week four, everybody's tired of it. and. You're ready to get out and do some stuff like this. Teams that stay together win together, at least in George County's experience, following a six-win improvement from the year before and now practicing six times in less than 48 hours in hopes of more of the same. Overnight team camp perhaps more important than ever heading into the 2022 campaign with just 11 seniors on the roster down from 23 last season. We lost a lot of talent last year. We lost a lot of talent. But what I've noticed here lately, especially in the summer, we're gaining a lot of talent too. In the true spirit of next man up, the Rebels returning just 10 starters, but they have a massive 2025 class of 32 sophomores waiting in the wings. George County actually opting out of fielding a ninth grade team last year in exchange for more JV reps for their young studs, now ready to step into their moment. We playing a lot of sophomores this year, and like we played in middle school together, so coming up together is like, we already got that connection and that bond, so it's like we just ready to roll. Things don't happen by mistake, right? You don't you don't climb the mountain just because you one day you woke up and tried to do it. Uh, so you got to have failures along the way because it keeps you hungry, it keeps you wanting to build, it keeps that juice going. Uh, and, and you know it was that was one of the concerns I had about this sophomore bunch that's never lost the game is how are they going to deal with the loss? What are they going to do with that? Are they just going to shut down? Are they going to rise up and, and fight through it? And uh, this team behind me right here, they've done nothing but rise up and talk, talk through, and, and we're a lot better team for it. With first place in Region 4 Class 5A on the line against Picky U, George County had no choice but to rise up when quarterback Ashton Hollins, now a freshman at Illinois, tore his left ACL on the fourth play of the game. In steps QB2, at the time freshman phenom, now sophomore sensation, Deuce Knight, who already has Division I offers from Ole Miss, Tennessee, and Indiana. While the trainers are dealing with Ashton on the field, I'm trying to find Deuce on the sidelines. And I can't find him. I get on the headsets, and I'm trying to get the coaches to locate him. And finally, one coach says he's already on the field. And I look out there, and he's got the offense huddled up. My stomach dropped. I got kind of nervous, I'm not going to lie. But then I, was, I had to go out there. Like, we got to come do this for the team. Like, this probably bit, up to that point, that was the biggest game of the season. So, like, Dang, I gotta go get this job done. I'm the one they were lying on. Four plays later, we score. I asked Trent when he came off the field, what did that, what did uh, Deuce say in the, when he had y'all huddled up? He says, my turn, guys, I got this. And there ain't gonna be no difference. We're fixing to go down here and score. So that's the kind of leader. He was 14 years old when he said that. The Rebels would go on to drop that late October matchup to the eventual state champs, 59-33, serving as their only district loss of the season in which they finished with a mark of 6-1 and one and an overall record of 7-5. and five. The end result being the program's first home playoff game since 2016, albeit going one and done in the first round against Laurel. Teams that actually want to bring it, we just have to bring it more. Those losses, they really fuel you because you think, like, we, really, we was hanging in the game with those teams. Now we really can beat them. We lost in the first round of the playoffs. There's nothing really to celebrate about. We're glad we got there, but we want to go to state, so you just got to be hungry. Knight's biggest offensive weapons this year, two juniors, wide receiver Marlon Odom and bulldozing running back Jacoby Street in place of Marquez Dorch, now at Mississippi State, and Trent Howell, now at Jones College. On the other side of the ball, Samuel O'Neill anchoring a D-line that returns every starter from last year, together proving that age is just a number. We don't have a lot of big guys, but we got guys with hearts. You're going to hear a lot about us being on a mission, wanting to focus, wanting to win a lot. Us coaches getting on us, trying to get us, uh, get us right for the season. We're on a mission at George County to be significant and, and people are talking about championships. So I'm ready to get back on the field and prove that again. Everybody thinks last year was a fluke and we're going to be really young this year, and, it's, and we are, but those guys are accepting that challenge. I'm excited to see that. We want to do something that hasn't been done in George County, that's win the state championship game. 
The highlight of the camp is a Tuesday night talent show following a 7-on-7 seven seven with D'Iberville High School, who's actually doing a team camp at MGCCC as well this year. We'll catch up with them in the coming days. George County opens up the season at Gulfport as the second game of the Port City Bowl doubleheader at 8.15 p.m. on August 26th. And some coaches' picks from third-year headman James Ray. Best meal in Loosedale going to Hickory Hog for some good pregame barbecue. When asked about his favorite championship moment, he says all of them. And then he watches the trophy presentation after every big game. As for coaching influence, it's all about studying the greats, even on 30 for 30s.